Most of all, please, Supreme Knight, uh, Carl Anderson, Most Reverend Archbishop Lagdamayo, Archbishop Lagdamayo and Bishop Onkyoko, and uh, the rest of the members of uh, the clergy. Members of the Supreme Council delegation, we have here with us uh, Supreme Director Alonso Tan, Vice Supreme Master Rodriguez, Father Grace, Ed Laxey, Brian Caulfield and Stephen Feiler, and Brother McDonald, Past Supreme Directors, uh, Brothers Bakay and Solis, uh, State Deputies Boyap, Rod Sorongon, and Bal Fauni, State Officers, District Deputies, Casey Trustees, Casey Fapi Trustees and Officers, Brother Knights, Sisters, uh, Guests. Due to time constraints, I will dispense with the reading of a specific authorities cited in my message. Happy Easter. The Lord has risen. Let us be glad and rejoice. With Jesus' passion, death, and resurrection that ushered us to this ninth national convention, we come together with the assurance of redemption and the promise of life everlasting. As the Gospel according to John reveals, Jesus assures us that he is the bread of life, the light of the world, the good supper, the resurrection and the life, the way, the truth, and the life. By dying, Jesus destroyed our death. And so the Apostle Paul proclaims the coming of what has been written, open quote, death is swallowed up in victory. Where of death is your victory? Where of death is your sting? Close quote. By rising, Jesus restored our life. And so the Holy Father, Pope Benedict XVI, in his Urbi et Orbi Easter message delivered at noon of 8 April, joyously proclaims, Surexit Christus, espes mea, Christ my hope has risen. Easter means a new life, a new beginning, a new creation. The Apostle Paul declares, whoever is in Christ is a new creation. Easter must as well mean a new KFC, New Knights of Columbus. Being answered by the eternal proclamation of Easter with the words of the Holy Father, Surexit Christus Spesmea, this ninth national convention has become exceptionally outstanding because of its chosen theme, so that the world may know new hope. This was also the theme of the 129th Supreme Convention of our order in Denver, Colorado, USA, last August 2011. New hope does not mean that there was an old hope. Hope never grows old. Hope is ageless. It is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. God alone is the ultimate ground or source and object of hope. Truly, God is hope. Christ is hope. God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ, is not, not are, the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. For in the book of Revelation, in three chapters, God makes it known that He is the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, the one who is and who was and who is to come. And in the Gospel, according to Matthew, Jesus says, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Why then does our theme say new hope? To me, the new does not refer to hope. It simply means that our world, our generation, have not fully known or welcomed God in the fullness of the Trinity as the source and object of hope. Hundreds of millions of our vast humanity do not even believe in God and Jesus Christ, our hope, or have even refused to hear of him, or hearing him, have forgotten him. It is the world of those groups that our theme has in mind. We Filipinos must congratulate ourselves because as reported in the 19 April 2012 issue of the Philippine Star, according to the survey carried out by the NORC research groups at the University of Chicago, the Philippines 
leads the world in the number of people who believe in God. 94% of the people in the Philippines said they have always believed in God, followed by Chile with 88% and the United States with 81%. Belief in God was lowest in the former East Germany, 13%, and in the Czech Republic, 20%. Now, per the data released by the National Statistics Office, our country's population has reached 92,337,852 as of 2010. Our population grew at the rate of 1.9% annually from 2000. These data do not include the nearly 8 million Filipinos abroad, more than 2 million of whom are in the United States of America, the home of our order. Easily, easily, more or less 83% of our population are Christians. And of the Christians, I suppose more than 90% are Roman Catholics. The CBCP can give us the correct uh, current data. Out of this number of Filipinos, 288,434 are members of the Knights of Columbus in the Philippines as of 31 March 2012. Each of them, each of them represents the usual Filipino family of an average of from four to six, including spouses. Counting their ascendancy in the family, we can say that in the Philippines, more or less one million and a half are Knights of Columbus and or committed to and supportive of the spiritual and moral ascendancy of these Knights. But with our extended families, the ascendancy has tremendously increased. Congratulations. On the other hand, on the other hand, of the world population of 7 billion, 36,000 million, 701,185, I repeat, 7,036,701,185, as of 4 o'clock in the afternoon of 25 April 2012, I got this from internet, 2.28 billion are Christians, and of the Christians, 1.15 billion are Roman Catholics. Of the Roman Catholics, of the Roman Catholics, only 1.8 million are members of the Knights of Columbus worldwide. This number includes those in the Philippines. The world of the non-Christians is another part of the world which our convention theme equally addresses. Further, Christian doctrines, teachings, and values are gradually losing hold in many parts of the world due to inter alia, religious intolerance, wars, terrorism, violence, and spiritual and moral bankruptcy. Right now, right now, at this very hour, the killings in Syria would need another Apostle Paul to travel to Damascus because in Syria, Jesus now repeats to many what he said to Paul. Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? Many other parts of the world are suffering from poverty, hunger, disease, and calamities. These two are parts of the world and of humanity to which our convention theme addresses. Also, we cannot deny nor even simply refuse to believe that there are many knights of our order who are only such in name or who are liabilities to the order. The world of this unfortunate segment of the KFC is also part of that world referred to in our convention team. I have shown to you the world that must now know new hope. Being the world's largest Catholic lay organization, 
and being committed to the cardinal principles of charity, unity, fraternity, and patriotism, whose acronym of KFC I have been proclaiming since I became a member in 1976 as meaning Knights of Christ and not just Knights of Columbus, it logically follows that to the KFC and to each of its members is imposed, is imposed, the grave Herculean and even fearsome task of making our brothers and sisters in those parts of the world referred to or being addressed by our convention theme, as I have just mentioned and described, know, feel, experience, and live the hope which to them may still be new. Thus, uh, as we celebrate the 130th anniversary of the founding of our order by Father Michael G. McGivney, the forthcoming 160th birthday anniversary of Father McGivney, the 107th anniversary of the establishment of the First Catholic Council in the Philippines, and prepare for the forthcoming 54th anniversary of the establishment of the KCFAPI, the main support of the KFC in the Philippines, by Father George Wilman, the first Philippine KFC deputy, and the Father McGivney of the Philippines, according to the pastor, Supreme Knight Virgil de Khan, let us solemnly renew our covenant with Jesus, our hope, and remain true and faithful knights of, the Christ, of Christ, even more than true and faithful knights of Columbus, who here came to his call, follow me. Remember, as the Apostle Paul solemnly declares to the Corinthians, open quote, we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God was appealing through us, close quote. We must, as Pope John Paul II, in his crossing the threshold of hope, cross the threshold of hope. We must, as the Holy Father says in his book, Jesus of Nazareth, encounter Jesus face to face. And this is Herculean task. We Knights of Columbus in the Philippines have shown equally tremendous sincerity of purpose and nobility of vision. If you recall, for the Eighth National Convention in Cebu City in April of 2010, our theme was Voluntarism, Neighbors Helping Neighbors. As your keynote speaker then, I stressed the concept of neighbor in the Old and New Testaments and focused on Jesus' command, open quote, love your neighbor as thyself, close quote, pronounced as the second greatest commandment. In your separate state conventions in April of 2011, the theme was, I am my brother's keeper. In my message published in the cross issue of May 2011, I stated that the heart of this theme is Jesus' proclamation at the Last Supper of his new covenant, open code, love one another as I have loved you, so you also should love one another. Love is the heart, soul, and strength of the cardinal, of the cardinal principles of our order. We must demonstrate our abiding concern for others, for our brothers. Now, now, by our convention team, we impose upon ourselves the solemn and noble duty to go beyond and outside our neighbors. We are to go to the world, I emphasized and particularized earlier. This time, not just to show love to our neighbors and to volunteer to help them, but to volunteer to help the world new, no new hope. We owe it to the Supreme Council of our order, through the Holy Spirit led and inspired exemplary man, our Supreme Knight Carl Anderson, to declare and proclaim for the Colombian year 2011-2012 the theme, 
so that the world may know new hope. Pope Benedict XVI in his encyclical letter, SP Salvi or Saving Hope, describes to us the true shape of Christian hope and enumerates these settings for learning and practicing hope, namely prayer, action and suffering, and judgment. There are many important significant uh, events in or for the Philippines that should inspire us to fulfill the spirit and articulate the full scope of our theme. First, the Holy Father has approved the canonization of Blessed Pedro Calungsod and scheduled the canonization on 21 October 2012, just a few days after our celebration of Columbus Day. Blessed Pedro Calungsod of Cebu, a young catechist, suffered martyrdom at age 17 in Guam for our faith. He will be the second Filipino saint for the canonization event. The Executive Council on the Canonization, headed by His Eminence Ricardo J. Cardinal Vidal and the National Commission co-chaired by Their Excellencies as Bishop Palma of Cebu and as Bishop Tagle of Manila, have adopted the theme, Life that is offered, faith that is proclaimed. The then 17-year-old Pedro Calunso died for the sake of letting the world know of new hope. He can be our model. Second, the recent beatification of Pope John Paul II, who would be soon canonized. He was very close to the Knights of Columbus and to our Supreme Knight. Third, the campaign for the beatification of our order's founder, Father Michael D. McGivney, is moving fast in the Philippines with the presentation of the Father Mac uh, McGivney pilgrim status for our three jurisdictions during our Eucharistic celebration this morning, and the inauguration and blessing of the Father McGivney multimedia studio at CBCP, and of the Father Michael McGivney oratory and monument at our own KCFAPI headquarters. May we give flesh and blood to the prayer for Father McGivney's canonization. Four, the renewed activities for the cause of Father George De Wilman. I, of the, the first KFC Philippine deputy, which are now led by the recently organized National Executive Committee for the cause of Father George J. Wilman, and actively spearheaded by our own Monsignor Pedro Quitorio III. May we make him our model as a knight leading other men in the war of good against evil, in the war of the gospel of life, against the culture of death. It may interest you to know that our order has so far produced <clears throat> and, given to the, and given to the world seven saints and four blessings. Fifth, to end on 30 May is the campaign, a million rosaries for the world, Filipinos at prayer, peace to all nations. I hope that you had signed the pledge for that. Six, your Casey Fappi, now only to be 54 years old on 1 August 2012, reckoned from its registration with the SEC as a non stock and non for profit mutual benefit association, is vigorously implementing and pursuing its efforts and programs to provide protection benefits to the members of the Knights of Columbus and the Philippines. And you heard the report given by the President. Let me just uh, stress one significant fact about the Casey Fapi. It has given all out financial support for the holding of state conventions by the three jurisdictions and for their national conventions, such as this convention now. To each initiative and together with the three jurisdictions, the National Convention Manual of the Knights of Columbus in the Philippines was promulgated. This is the first under that manual. With all the support Casey Fapi is providing, I cannot expect any of the three state jurisdictions to truthfully assert that a national convention can succeed without Casey Fapi's support. Seven, <clears throat> our Supreme Knight, Carl Anderson, has made his third visit to the Philippines. He was with us on our eighth national convention 
He was with us in March of 2005 for the centennial of the entry into our country of the KFC with the establishment of the First Council, Council 1000 of the Manila Cathedral. Giving his time, talent, understanding, and wisdom to a faraway jurisdiction is a sacrifice of self emptying all for the sake of the Order's vision and mission. His presence validates the divine inspired choice of the theme so that the world may know new hope. We must never forget that he has written the book, Civilization of Love, which teaches and guides, open quote, what every Catholic can do to transform the world, close quote. In short, the goal of our theme is transformation of the world. And only love can do that. The Apostle Paul reminds us of faith, hope, and love, but the greatest of this is love. Let me now end by asserting without fear of contradiction or any dissenting opinion that this Ninth National Convention will be an empty gesture, an exercise in futility, unless, as Knights of Columbus, or better yet, as Knights of Christ, or as Ambassadors of Christ, we unconditionally embrace with all our hearts the full meaning of our theme by becoming living, visible, fearless instruments to help make known to the world the new hope. Let us be inspired by the Apostle Paul in his address to the Romans, and I quote, and we even boast in hope of the glory of God. Not only on this, but we even boast of our affliction, knowing that affliction produces endurance, and endurance produces proven character, and proven character, hope, and hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Also, you must begin immediately. I repeat, also, you must begin immediately by, among other things, only among other things, making yourselves as exemplary models of virtues and values in your community. Strengthening your councils by increasing membership, reviving suspended councils, and establishing new ones, and pursuing with unparalleled courage and vigor the cardinal principles of Colombianism and the various KFC programs. By taking full advantage of the KCFAPI protection benefits and promoting and protecting the sanctity of life, of marriage, and of the family. The campaign against the RS bill must be given utmost priority by the members of the Knights of Columbus in the Philippines. God bless us all. Vibat Jesus.